The anime begins with the attack of a man named Isaac McDougall against Central. It is said that Isaac is a former alchemist of a country that has water alchemy. He rebelled because he knew the badness of that country. After that, appeared two brothers named Edward Elric and Alphonse Elric. Edward is a very talented alchemist. He can use alchemy without the transmutation circle. He also became a member of the country's alchemists at a very young age, while Alphonse has an average alchemy ability, not as great as Edward. The Elric brothers are assigned to stop Isaac. In the middle of the fight, Isaac managed to attack Alphonse's head so that his iron headgear came off, but no one was there. It is said that the Elric brothers have done something taboo, namely human transmutation, so that Alphonse lost his whole body, while Edward lost his arms and legs. Therefore, Edward uses replacement hands and feet made of iron. This is what earned him the nickname Alchemist of Steel. The Elric brothers want to find the Philosopher's Stone which has the mysterious power to restore parts of his body that were lost due to human transmutation. Their purpose in transmuting humans is to bring back their dead mother. However, the basic principle of alchemy is that an equal exchange for restoring a dead soul requires another soul to replace it. In the process of human transmutation, Edward enters another dimension and meets a mysterious figure claiming to be God or the Truth. The Elric brothers indiscriminately transmuted humans so that Alphonse disappeared while their mother could not be resurrected. Knowing this, Edward was very sad and did not want to lose the person he loved a second time. Therefore, he performs human transmutation again to return Alphonse. Still, he only sacrifices his hands and feet so that Alphonse only returns his soul while his body does not return in its entirety, then Alphonse's soul is sealed in armor. After that, Isaac managed to escape from the Elric brothers. He met a man named Bradley who was the supreme leader of Central. Isaac then attacked him, but Bradley, who was very strong, could kill Isaac with just one slash of his sword. A few days later, the Elric brothers headed to the city of Lior because they heard the news about a heretical sect. The sect's leader claimed that he had miracles from God and promised his followers the impossible. After that, the Elric brothers headed to the place of worship of the sect. Arriving there, they met a woman named Rose, a cult follower praying for her long-dead boyfriend to come back to life. The Elric brothers pretend to want to join the sect, then they are met by a male cult leader named Cornello. He can do alchemy by ignoring the principle of equal exchange. This is what he calls a miracle. They suspect that Cornello used the Philosopher's Stone to do this. Shortly after, came the battle between the Elric brothers and Cornello, who used his pet Chimera. It is explained that Chimera is a combination of various animals made with alchemy. But Edward can easily defeat the creature. Therefore, Cornello made a machine gun with alchemy and then shot everyone there, including his subordinates. After that, the Elric brothers ran away and took Rose. After Rose is in a safe place, Edward prepares to return to face Cornello until they meet in a room and ask what Cornello's real purpose is. Cornello immediately replied that he wanted to set up an army of sect followers and try to rule the country. But their conversation so far turned out to be broadcast throughout the city, so he had lied to his followers, and it was exposed all this time. As a result, he was very angry and turned into a monster. However, Edward managed to beat him until the magic stone in Cornello's ring fell and disappeared. After the incident, Cornello returns to headquarters and meets with lust and gluttony. But for some reason, Cornello was killed by the two of them. On the other hand, the Elric brothers left the city of Lior and returned to Central. They meet Roy Mustang and discuss a creature called the Chimera in search of clues to restore his body. Roy took them to meet an alchemist who was an expert on Chimeras. At that place, they meet a male alchemist of the country's genetic research division named Sho Tucker. It is said that he once made a Chimera that could speak human language, but the Chimera could only say one sentence, which is I want to die. Afterward, the Elric brothers paid a visit to the Tucker Library. They meet Tucker's daughter named Nina and her dog named Alexander. At that time, Tucker was feeling pressured because the country's alchemist had to propose a new breakthrough regarding genetics. If not, he is threatened with being fired from his position. Out of ideas, he decides to transmute his daughter and dog into one so that she becomes a talking chimera. Seeing this, Edward immediately beat Tucker because what he did was very inhuman. From there, it was finally revealed that the chimera who understood human language was a combination of humans and animals. On the other hand, a man named Scar has a mission to kill alchemists who oppose God's way. One example is a country alchemist named Bass Grand who was killed at his hands. After that, he came to Tucker and killed him and his Chimera because what Tucker had done was against God's way, namely, creating a new living being like the Chimera who was not in the nature of a human being. A few moments later, the military came and discussed the murder case against Tucker. They then concluded that Scar would still be after other famous alchemists like Edward and Roy. Meanwhile, the Elric brothers who were lamenting their helplessness turned out to be Scar's next target. Unfortunately, the direction they are going is a dead end when trying to escape. Having no other choice, the Elric brothers finally fought back. However, their strength was still far below Scar's. 
Alphonse's body was seen destroyed by Scar's attack and Edward's iron fist, which was also destroyed by Scar's attack. Luckily, Roy and the Central Military came when the Elric brothers' lives were threatened. But Roy couldn't get alchemy out when he was about to attack Scar. It turns out he is a fire alchemist, which cannot be released when it rains. After that, came a male artistic alchemist named Alex Louis Armstrong who immediately attacked to make Scar so desperate that he was shot by the military. It is known, it turns out that Scar is one of Ishvalan, a tribe from the country of Ishval, who worships Ishvala as their lord. In this country, riots often occur due to differences in beliefs. The unrest led to a widespread civil war in the eastern state. To that end, the military leadership ordered the extermination of the Ishval tribe because it was considered a source of trouble and unrest. Most of the country's alchemists were assigned to eradicate the tribe. Therefore, Scar grieved a grudge against the country's alchemists and the central military. After that incident, the Elric brothers intend to return to their hometown and the city of Resemble to meet a woman named Winry. She is the mechanic and designer of the Elric brothers' iron bodies and their childhood friend. Long story short, the Elric brothers, accompanied by Armstrong, went by train. On the way, they accidentally met a man and a doctor named Marco. He is an alchemist in the field of medicine who used to live in Central, but he disappeared after the civil war in Ishval. Finally, they decided to postpone the trip and stop with Dr. Marco because Edward thought maybe Dr. Marco understood about human transmutation. And as it turned out, Dr. Marco happened to have done research on the Philosopher's Stone and was even able to make it. Knowing the Philosopher's Stone could be made, Edward then asked Dr. Marco to teach him how to make the object. Dr. Marco then informed him that research documents about the object were stored in the Central Library. After that, the Elric brothers continued their journey to their hometown. They asked Winry to make iron hands and feet when they got there. Soon, they returned to Central to find the Philosopher's Stone research document. However, after arriving there, the library was already destroyed. It turned out that the library building had already been destroyed by Lust and Gluttony. On the other hand, Lust and Gluttony wanted to attack Scar, but he managed to escape. Afterward, the Elric brothers met a woman named Sheska. She is the person who knows the contents of Marco's research documents. Even though the document was destroyed, she still remembered everything. She then regenerated the document within five days. After that, the Elric brothers studied the document's contents and learned a surprising fact in it. It turns out that to make a stone of magic requires human sacrifice. They immediately learned the facts that Central was hiding. After that, they wanted to check out one of the empty buildings next to the prison in Central. They suspect the place is a place for making magic stones using the sacrifices of prisoners who were sentenced to death. When night fell, they rushed to the place. Edward entered through the ventilation hole while Alpont stood guard outside when he got there. But their arrival has been known by the inmates at the place. Suddenly Edward is ambushed by a male inmate named Slicer, while another male prisoner named Barry the Chopper ambushes Alpont's. And the fight was inevitable. After a long fight, Edward realized that the inmate was a research victim. Meanwhile, Alphonse was fighting with Barry. He says something bad to Alphonse in the middle of the fight, making him hesitate. Barry says that Alphonse is just a doll created by his brother. On the other hand, Edward managed to defeat Slicer. In the last moments, Slicer asks to be killed, but Edward can't do it. After that, Lust and Envy appear, who then kill Slicer. They destroyed the place because their secret was known. Not only that, but Edward was taken by Envy and handed over to Alphonse outside. After the incident, Edward was taken to the hospital, where he contacted Winry and asked her to come to Central to fix his iron fist. After that, Alphonse doubted his existence because he was influenced by Barry's words. He then told what he thought to Edward. But the conversation was known by Winry, then she advised Alphonse and explained that he was really human. Hearing this, Alphonse came to his senses and apologized to Edward, and the two brothers began to get along again. On the other hand, Scar, who was seriously injured from being attacked by lust and gluttony was cared for by his fellow Ishvalan tribesmen. Meanwhile, the Elric brothers, Hughes and Armstrong, are discussing clues to the Philosopher's Stone. Suddenly, Bradley arrives and finds out they're investigating the Philosopher's Stone. He reminded them to be vigilant as they were investigating something of a secret nature. Suddenly Hughes is attacked by lust and is badly injured and runs away to reach a public telephone booth. He wants to contact Roy and wants to provide information that the military is in danger, but he is blocked by Envy. Possessing the power to change the form, Envy then transforms himself to resemble Hugh's wife so that he can't fight back. After that, Envy killed Hughes on the spot. On the other hand, Roy wants to find out who killed Hughes. He discusses with Armstrong and begins to suspect the military officials who are behind it all. Meanwhile, the Elric brothers and Winry are on their way to the city of Dublith to meet their teacher, but they stop first in Rush Valley. In that city, Edward's silver watch was stolen by a woman named Peninia. After that, they chased the thief until they came to a house. 
At that place, the Elric brothers and Winry met the Paninia family. They also meet a male mechanic named Dominic and Winry begs to become his student. Afterward, they met a pregnant woman named Sedilla and touched her stomach. This makes them remember if they were ever in a mother's womb. Moments later, it was time for Sedilla to give birth. But unfortunately, it was raining heavily that day and she could not be taken to the hospital. Dominic immediately went out to find a doctor but Sedilla was no longer strong. Finally, Winry took action to help the delivery process. Winry is the daughter of a doctor, so she understands a little about childbirth. Long story short, the delivery process went smoothly and the baby was born normal. Edward and Alphonse were amazed to see the birth of a life. Because from the alchemist's point of view, humans can't create humans. After that, Dominic thanked Winry for helping give birth to his grandson and was willing to make her his student. The next day, the Elric brothers continued their journey to the city of Dublith while Winry stayed in Rush Valley to learn more about Automail. Automail is a tool related to the iron foot and hand used by Edward and Alphonse. On the other hand, the Elric brothers arrive in the city of Dublith and meet their female teacher named Izumi Curtis. They were told about their past and how Edward and Alphonse practiced alchemy. They were left on a deserted island and only equipped with a knife. From there, they realize the law of nature that living things must destroy life to survive. They then realize that they are only a small part of the universe, just as ants look small from a human point of view. After a brief flashback, the story continues. Izumi realized that they had already done a human transmutation which caused Alphonse's body to disappear. It is revealed that Izumi herself has also done it. It is said that her child died after being born. Therefore, she performs a human transmutation to bring her child back to life. Like what happened to Edward, she goes to another dimension and meets God. But these efforts were unsuccessful, and she lost her internal organs. It is also revealed that Izumi can perform alchemy without the transmutation circle, just like Edward. After that, they discussed how to get their bodies back. But their conversation is known by a mysterious creature who is looking for information about people who can transmute human souls. The next day, Alphonse was framed using a message that said that he was asked to come to a place called Devil's Nest. At that place, he met a group consisting of Chimeras. The group was led by a homunculus man named Greed. Hearing Chimera's words, Alphonse immediately thought of Nina and Alexander. Here it is revealed that a perfect Chimera resembles a human that can talk and even fight. Besides that, Alphonse is also surprised by the existence of homunculus because, as far as he knows, homunculus is a myth that is impossible to create. Homunculus has the characteristics of a red Ouroboros tattoo. Greed's goal in capturing Alphonse was to dig up information about the transmutation of the soul that was included in the armor because he thought it was the key to eternal life. Shortly after, Edward comes and fights against Greed who has fast regeneration power and a very strong shield. However, Edward found a way to penetrate the shield by breaking the substance from the shield with alchemy. Unfortunately, his body was badly injured and he could not defeat Greed. Shortly after Izumi came and helped, she hit Greed's head and sent him flying. Meanwhile, Bradley and his military troops came to the Devil's Lair and eradicated the Chimera troops. After that, came the one-on-one -on -one battle between Bradley and Greed who had a level of strength far below him. So Greed couldn't land a single hit, and all he did was defend. In the middle of the fight, Bradley's identity is revealed. He has an Ouroboros tattoo on his eye, meaning he is a homunculus. Bradley kills the Chimera that is in Alphonse's armor so that the armor is filled with blood. This makes his memory come back. He remembers that he had entered another dimension and met God. After that, Greed was captured and brought to Central. It is revealed that there are many hidden places where Homunculus gathers, including Lust, Gluttony, Envy, Greed and Wrath, which is Bradley's real name. Here also appears the mysterious figure of the Homunculus creator, called Dad. Greed was arrested for treason. Then he was put into hot lava until it turned into a red liquid which was then drunk by Dad. On the other hand, Scar is seen fighting against a man and defeating him. It seems that he is still consistent with his mission which is to kill alchemists who oppose God's way. After that, Scar returned to his hiding place and met a little girl named Mei Chong who came from the land of Sing. She wanders across the country to meet Edward in search of information about the secret of eternal life. On the other hand, Roy managed to catch Barry. He is looking for information about the research on the Philosopher's Stone hidden by Central. But unfortunately, Barry could not provide any information. Afterward, the Elric brothers returned to Rush Valley to meet with Winry and repair their broken iron fist. At that place, they also met a man named Ling Yao who came from Sing Country and tried to force Edward to give him information about the Philosopher's Stone. There was a small fight between Ling Yao's bodyguards and the Elric brothers. In the middle of the fight, Alphonse took out alchemy without the transmutation circle. This is because the memories of human transmutation and encountering God have returned. After that, Ling Yao told his purpose of seeking the Philosopher's Stone to achieve eternal life, not for himself but for the Emperor of the dying country of Sing. 
it is revealed that Ling Yao is the son of the emperor. Afterward, the Elric brothers, Winry and Ling Yao went to Central. Arriving there, Ling Yao felt something strange with Central. Meanwhile, Edward, Alphonse, and Winry have just learned of Hugh's death. They went to his house to meet his wife and son and apologize for involving Hughes in such a dangerous situation. On the other hand, Lust and Envy find out that Roy is investigating Central. They find a way to silence him by arresting one of the women named Ross who is Roy's subordinate on charges of killing Hughes. After that, Barry broke through the prison and saved Ross and Ling Yao who were also there. But when on the way, Ross was intercepted by Roy and then she was burned with his alchemy. The incident made Edward very angry why Roy had the heart to kill his own partner. Shortly after, Armstrong took Edward to a place called Xerxes. Arriving there, they met Ross, who turned out to be Roy's plan and the burned body was a fake corpse. After that, they discussed Homunculus being the mastermind behind the military. Meanwhile, at Central, Lust frees Barry's real body to attack Roy's group. In the battle, suddenly, Gluttony appeared behind Reza Hawkeye, which caused her to shoot him repeatedly but had no effect, and Roy was lucky to come to help. After that, they escaped from Gluttony and chased Barry's real body until they arrived at a laboratory. They entered the laboratory and scattered. Roy, who was with Jean, was blocked by Lust, and she was shot by Roy, causing a gaping wound on her body. From there, it was revealed that Homunculus' body was made of a magical stone. However, Lust managed to beat Roy and Jean. Afterward, Lust rushed over to where Barry was. At that place, she met Alphonse and Riza and told them that Roy had died at her hands. Hearing this, Riza fired at Lust repeatedly, but it didn't affect her body. Suddenly Roy appears who turns out he has not been killed. At that time, there was a fight between Roy and Lust again. Roy immediately attacked Lust using his alchemy flame. Although Homunculus can regenerate its body quickly, Roy's alchemy fire eats away faster and eventually, Lust dies at Roy's hands. Long story short, Edward returned to the city of Resembul and was surprised to meet his father, Hohenheim. He and his father then talked about human transmutation. He also realized when transmuting, the human that appeared was not his mother. After that, Hohenheim warned that something terrible would happen. However, the meaning of his father's words is still a mystery. On the other hand, Scar returns to Central to kill the country's alchemist. The Elric brothers then get the idea to lure the homunculus using Scar's intermediary. They then cooperated with Ling Yao because he was also interested in the homunculus immortality. The homunculus intend to make the Elric brothers victims because they once exposed the truth while transmuting humans. In other words, the homunculus will not let Scar kill Edward. Long story short, Edward's plan to lure the homunculus goes according to plan. Scar manages to find him in fights. That's what then lures Gluttony and also Bradley into battle. Gluttony was immediately beaten by Ling Yao but Bradley came to help him. While the fight was going on, suddenly Winry came and overheard Edward's conversation with Scar that her father had been killed by Scar. Her father was a doctor who was involved in the Ishful War. Scar, who was ruled by vengeance at that time, killed the people of Central, but without realizing it, his life was saved by Dr. Rockbell from Central. Winry intends to kill Scar, but Edward manages to calm her, so she doesn't fall into a vicious circle. Meanwhile, Ling Yao tried to escape from the pursuit of the two homunculus. Gluttony headed towards Scar's place while Bradley chased after Ling Yao. Suddenly, a dog named Lan Fan who is Ling Yao's subordinate, cut off his own arm to outwit Bradley. Meanwhile, Gluttony arrives at Scar's place and tries to kill him, but Ling Yao came and stuffed a grenade into Gluttony's body, causing him to shatter. When Gluttony's body regenerated, Ling Yao instantly tied him up using an iron rope. After that, Riza came and transported Gluttony in her vehicle with Ling Yao, while Edward and Alphonse continued the fight with Scar. When Scar wanted to be caught by them, Mei Chong came and helped him escape from the place. On the other hand, Gluttony was taken to a hidden place. But when he heard Roy's voice, he was furious and turned into a monster. Gluttony holds a grudge against Roy because he killed Lust. However, Roy was asked to return to Central immediately, and the affairs of Gluttony were left to the Elric brothers as well as Ling Yao. In the middle of the battle, suddenly Envy came. Ling Yao also fought one-on-one -on -one against Envy. Ling Yao who was strong enough to make Envy difficult to deal with. Meanwhile, Gluttony wanted to attack Ling Yao, but Edward wanted to save him, and in the end, Edward, Envy, and Ling Yao were sucked into Gluttony's body. On the other hand, Roy met with Bradley and military officials who knew the secrets of Central. He is still alive despite knowing the secret, but he was threatened that if he opened his mouth, Riza would be killed. Meanwhile, Edward and Ling Yao were in Gluttony's stomach. They then try to find a way out of the place and meet Envy. He said that the place was a failed artificial truth gate, and there was no way out there. What is meant by the gate of truth here is the gate to another dimension where God is, where Edward and Alphonse once entered that place. Here it is revealed that Homunculus' father is looking for a way to enter the truth gate. And this is also what causes Edward and Alphonse not to be killed and are said to be valuable sacrifices. 
Envy also tells the reality of the war that took place in Ishval, that the war was caused by the homunculus. Hearing this, Edward is furious and beats Envy because the war caused an endless grudge which made Winry's father die, and Scar becomes a murderer. The battle between Envy and Edward and Ling Yao arrived. Envy shows his true form in the form of a giant monster so that Edward is caught and devoured by him. In the stomach, Edward saw the stone and the souls of humans who were sacrificed, and then he realized how to get out of the stomach. On the other hand, Alphonse asked Gluttony to meet Dad, and they headed to Central. But they didn't realize that they were being followed by Scar and Mei Chong. Meanwhile, Edward plans to transmute himself. This is to open the gates of truth in and out of the real world. That way, the souls of humans who are sacrificed can come out of Gluttony's stomach. Edward then entered the gate of truth. At that place, he met Alphonse's body. He tried to take the body but couldn't because Alphonse's soul wasn't there. On the other hand, Gluttony and Alphonse arrived at father's place. Alphonse was shocked when he saw the face of Homunculus's father was similar to Hohenheim, his father. Suddenly Edward, Envy, and Ling Yao came out of Gluttony's stomach. Homunculus' father figure talked about Hohenheim to Edward that he had known Hohenheim even before the Elric brothers were born. However, what his relationship with Hohenheim was like is still unknown. After that, Dad ordered Gluttony to kill Ling Yao, but the Elric brothers tried to protect him. Edward tries to attack Dad using alchemy but all in vain. Dad emitted a red light that prevented the Elric brothers from using alchemy. Ling Yao was caught, and Dad tried to make him a homunculus by implanting a magic stone into his body. Afterward, Ling Yao spoke to the homunculus within him. He is willing to accept the homunculus, and his body is taken over by a homunculus named Greed. Scar and Mei Chong also arrived at the place. Edward told Scar the truth that Ishval's war was caused by homunculus. After that, Gluttony tries to kill Scar because he thinks this is a good opportunity since no one can use alchemy in that place. But unexpectedly, Scar can still do alchemy as well as Mei Chong, and the fight is inevitable. Scar is hit by an attack from Dad and is seriously injured, so they try to escape with the help of Alphonse. Edward and Alphonse sacrifice themselves so Scar and Mei Chong can escape because they know that the homunculus will not kill him. After the incident, the Elric brothers were taken to Bradley's place. They were threatened that if they misbehaved, Winry would be killed. On the other hand, Dr. Marco met with Scar. He explains what really happened during the Ishval War. He once researched the Sorcerer's Stone by sacrificing the Ishval tribe. The stone was then given to a country alchemist named Kimbley, the killer of Scar's brother during the war. And now Scar already knows who the real enemy is. Meanwhile, the Elric brothers thought there was something different about Scar's alchemy and Mei Chong since they could use it against Homunculus' father. On the other hand, Kimbley who had been imprisoned had been released by order of Homunculus. He is picked up by Envy and given the task of finding Scar and Dr. Marco. Meanwhile, Scar, Dr. Marco, and Mei Chong plan to go to a place where his brother's research is hidden. This time three different groups, namely Scar, Elric Brothers, and Kimbley, headed to the same place but with different goals. Kimbley managed to catch Scar using the train, and a fight ensued. Scar managed to stick the iron into Kimbley's body so that he was seriously injured. In the end, Kimbley decided to run away and promised to fight it out when the next meeting later. Long story short, the Elric brothers arrived at their destination in an area called Briggs. They met Armstrong's older sister, Olivier Mira Armstrong. They talked about the alchemy of the Singh country and intended to study it. Suddenly, a homunculus named Sloth came to the place. Sloth was shot with all kinds of weapons, but they didn't work at all. The Elric brothers and Briggs military force team up to defeat Sloth. They poured some kind of chemical liquid that made him freeze and unable to move. After that, the Elric brothers were taken to the basement and asked to explain what happened. They analyzed the war that occurred in various areas. The battlefield was drawn on a map resulting in a giant transmutation circle. It is revealed that the homunculus plan is that they want to make a magic stone by slaying all humans in various areas. And finally, they all unite to thwart the homunculus plan. On the other hand, it is told about the Elric brothers' father, Hohenheim is an immortal being. He had seen many deaths in his lifetime. He thought that being immortal could see the beautiful things in this world. But on the contrary, there is one thing that made him change, namely his family. He was afraid that he had to watch his children grow up, grow old, and die, but he was still alive. Therefore, he intends to release his immortality so that he can age and die. Meanwhile, Raven and Kimbley come to Briggs. Raven intends to incite Mira Armstrong to join the homunculus plan, but Mira refuses and kills Raven right then and there. While Kimbley comes with Winry to silence the Elric brothers, if they try to thwart Central's plans, Winry will be killed. After that, they are asked to arrest Scar and Dr. Marco. Edward agreed with the request, but he had his own plan. He wanted to find Mei Chong who might be with Scar to learn alchemy from the Singh country. While at Central, Bradley's son named Selim reveals his true identity, that he is the first homunculus named Pride. 
He has the power of shadows and can reach all places where there is a shadow, even from a distance. On the other hand, Edward and Alphonse arrive at the town of Baskul and meet Mei Chong and Dr. Marco. They then discuss that there was something strange about the history of the country of Amstris. Dr. Marco said that there was someone who realized this long before they were Scar's brother. While in the same city, Scar fought and found it quite difficult to fight the two key mirrors sent by Central. After that, Edward and Alphonse came to help, and the two key mirrors were defeated. Shortly after, the Elric brothers and Scar's group worked together to outwit Kimbley. Since Winry is currently held hostage by Kimbley, Scar kidnaps her to outwit Kimbley. That way, Winry is free, and Edward can act without worries. It's time for Edward's fight against Kimbley. He managed to knock Kimbley down until his stone fell. But Kimbley has two magic stones then he blows up the place, causing Edward to be impaled by the rubble. Even though he was injured, Edward still managed to help two key mirrors of Kimbley's men, who were also hit by the rubble. After that, the two key mirrors thanked and helped Edward to be taken to the nearest doctor. Still at the battle scene, one of the key mirrors found the Philosopher's Stone supposedly belonging to Kimbley and then took it. On the other hand, Scar was cracking the secret code on the document written by his brother. The document contains transmutation circles throughout the country. In one scene, it is told about the past of Homunculus and Hohenheim. It is known, formerly Hohenheim was a slave who did not have a name, and he was usually called by the number 23. His master had conducted research on Homunculus using Hohenheim's blood. The research gave birth to a tiny homunculus in a bottle. As a token of gratitude, homunculus gave the knowledge that made Hohenheim a great alchemist. In addition to the homunculus science, he also gave him a proper name, namely Van Hohenheim. After that, homunculus and Hohenheim headed for Xerxes city because the king of Xerxes was looking for a way to live eternally. Homunculus then told about human transmutation. The king did this and killed the entire population of Xerxes. But it turns out that the human transmutation is not intended for the king but for Homunculus and Hohenheim. After that incident, Homunculus escapes from the bottle and resembles Hohenheim. It was also what allowed Hohenheim to live forever. The story continues. Scar's group is now in the village where the Ishvalan tribe took refuge. Shortly after, Envy comes to the place disguised as the Ishvalan tribe to catch Dr. Marco. It turned out that Scar's group had planned this, and there was a fight between Envy and Scar's group. Envy didn't notice that he was being attacked using Mei Chong's ranged alchemy. Envy was furious and then changed form. After that, Scar came and attacked him from above, knocking him down. Envy then tried to catch Dr. Marco, but unexpectedly, Dr. Marco was able to use alchemy specifically to destroy the magical stone. Dr. Marco is an expert in making magical stones, so he is also an expert in destroying them. Envy was defeated and turned into a helpless little monster, which was then handed over to Mei Chong to be brought to the land of Sing. It is known that Homunculus is building underground tunnels across the country that form a transmutation circle. Meanwhile, Alphonse parted ways with Scar's group and headed toward the city of Lior. He met with Hohenheim and said he wanted to destroy the tunnels in the city of Lior, but Hohenheim forbade that because the tunnel was guarded by the pride. On the other hand, Edward has recovered and intends to find Alphonse's whereabouts. Meanwhile, Greed's former subordinates infiltrated Central and met Greed, who was inside Ling Yao's body. The encounter reminds Greed of the past and makes his consciousness waver. But former Greed actually holds a grudge against Bradley for killing his friends while in the Devil's Lair. Here it is also revealed that Ling Yao is also still alive. As a result, in one body, there are two souls, namely Ling Yao and Greed. After that incident, Greed went to Central and fought with Bradley, but he managed to escape when he was about to lose. One day, Edward goes to where he once fought against Gluttony. Suddenly Greed comes to the place and talks about Central. He decides to join Edward's group to fight Central. Meanwhile, in Central, Alphonse is captured by Gluttony and Pride. On the other hand, Scar and Dr. Marco join the rest of the Ishvalan tribe and prepare for the final battle. Meanwhile, Edward's group meets with Hohenheim to work together. In this case, Edward's group, Scar's group, Roy's group, Mira's group, Hohenheim, Izumi Curtis, and Mei Chong all join forces to defeat the homunculus in Central. After meeting with Hohenheim, Edward's group is blocked by Alphonse who is being controlled by Pride. After that, there was a fight between Edward and Pride. Edward turned off all the surrounding light so Pride couldn't cast his shadow, but it also affects Edward himself. He can't see in the dark. Afterward, Gluttony came to the place in dark conditions, but his sense of smell was very strong. Ling Yao then took over his body because he could sense the presence of the homunculus. Just when Gluttony took out the artificial truth gate and prepared to suck it all in, suddenly Lan Fan and Ling Yao's men came and beat Gluttony. Even though he was beaten badly, he still had difficulty dying. The villagers, who heard the commotion, then approached the battle area. Seeing the torches carried by the residents allowed Pride to cast shadows again. 
After that, Edward fights against Pride using a light bomb to free Alphonse from Pride's entanglement. As a result, Alphonse survived and was cared for by Hohenheim. Pride, who feels cornered, decides to eat gluttony. Alphonse thought of a plan to stop Pride but needed Hohenheim's help. He deliberately gave himself up to be captured by Pride. After that, Hohenheim took out alchemy to lock them up. As a result, Pride and Alphonse are trapped in a dark room and will not be able to escape because there is no light at all. Meanwhile, Scar's group came to Edward's place to discuss something. On the other hand, Roy Mustang's group and Mira Armstrong's group started attacking Central. After that, Edward's group arrived at Central, looking for a way to where Homunculus's father was. The Central military began to be depressed so they released artificial troops that had been hidden underground. Meanwhile, Edward's troops are fighting against the puppet troops. On the other hand, Mei Chong, who brought Envy, was also attacked by the puppet troops, and Envy was eaten by one of the puppet troops. Then his form changed back to normal. It looks like Mira Armstrong is fighting Sloth and has a hard time dealing with it. It wasn't long before Alex Armstrong came to help. On the other hand, Pride is sending Morse code by hitting Alphonse's head, and then Kimberly comes and saves him. As a result, Pride is free from his cage and attacks Alphonse. After that, Heinkel gave Alphonse the stone that he had taken with Edward. Alphonse uses the stone and prepares to fight Pride and Kimberly. Kimberly gets hit in the vitals, almost dies, and is eaten by Pride. Shortly after, Alphonse's group fled towards Central. Meanwhile, Roy came to Edward's place and burned all the puppet troops. Envy, who was chasing Mei Chong to Edward's place, then met Roy there. Afterward, there was a fight between Roy and Envy. Roy has a personal grudge against Envy for killing Hughes. Envy then remembered Lust who was burned to death by Roy. She tried to escape but was caught again and eventually burned to death. Envy returns to his small form, and Roy intends to kill him. But he was stopped by Edward and Scar because they didn't want Roy to always be shrouded in revenge. It is revealed that Envy is jealous of humans, and he cries. And in the end, he pulled out the magic stone inside him and died. On the other hand, Briggs' troops already controlled 90% of the central area. They then celebrate victory, but soon, Bradley appears. He entered the central government building. At that place, he was greeted by Greed, and a fight ensued. Not long after, Grandpa Fu came to help Greed. In a different place, Hohenheim was impaled by Homunculus' father. Then he put the souls in his body to Dad. Here it is revealed that Hohenheim cooperates with the human souls in his body. The souls then attack Dad from within, destroying his body. After that, Homunculus' father transformed into a black figure. Meanwhile, Edward's group continued their journey towards Homunculus' father's place. In the middle of their journey, they were stopped by a male doctor who had created Bradley. Then he brought out an army of immortals similar to Bradley's, and they fought the army. In the middle of the fight, the doctor did a human transmutation, and instantly Edward, Alphonse, and Izumi disappeared because the three of them had already opened the Gate of Truth. The three of them were sent to Dad's place and met Dad who had changed form. They were surprised that even Hohenheim had been caught. Then Dad said that at this time, four sacrifices had been collected and still needed one more. On the other hand, Roy is forced to perform human transmutation and open the Gates of Truth. If he doesn't want to, then Riza will be killed. This is so that Roy can be used as the last victim. He then refused. Shortly after, Bradley and Pride come to arrest and still force Roy to perform human transmutation. After that, he was sent to Dad's place with four other victims. The final battle has finally begun, Dad has captured all five victims, and the transmutation circle across the land has been activated. The souls of the entire population were sucked in by Dad. After that, he turned into a giant black figure, drawing God's power from the sky. He managed to absorb God's power, and his form is now changing like an ordinary human, but he can hold the sun in his hands. Hohenheim had already predicted this. He has spread the souls in him to various places so that these souls are also absorbed into Dad's body, eventually destroying him from within. This made Dad bring back the souls that had been absorbed into their respective bodies. Meanwhile, Scar defeats Bradley, then activates Blue Alchemy by transmuting circles across the land. The alchemy serves as a neutralizer of the power of the Sorcerer's Stone. This is the result of research from Scar's brother. After that, Edward and his friends could bring out their alchemy to the fullest, thus making Dad desperate and making him go to the surface to make more magic stones from living people. Afterward, Pride tries to help Dad by fighting Edward. Suddenly Kimberly's soul and Pride's body rebelled, making him unstable. As a result, Edward managed to beat him. Now Pride is back to his original form, which is a small baby. The battle continues on the surface of Central. Everyone from the military as well as the alchemists are trying to attack Dad continuously so that he runs out of energy from the Philosopher's Stone. After that, Dad let out a huge explosion that sent Edward crashing and losing his iron fist. Edward's hand was pierced by the crushed iron, making him unable to move. Seeing this, Dad planned to turn Edward into a stone of magic. 
Afterward, Alpon sacrificed himself by transmuting himself to return Edward's hand. A few moments later, Edward's hand returned to normal and he was able to do alchemy and managed to make Dad fall. It didn't stop there, Dad got back up, and now he attacks Greed intending to absorb his magic stone. Greed instantly inserted his soul into Dad's body to destroy him from within. Then he managed to make Dad's body become like brittle charcoal, but it also killed Greed. After that, Edward immediately hits Dad's body to make the souls inside him come out and finally, Dad is really dead. Meanwhile, now Edward feels very sad because of the loss of Alphonse. He then thought about how to restore Alphonse's before. He did a human transmutation and entered the Gate of Truth. He meets God and promises to throw away his alchemy abilities in exchange for Alphonse. And in the end, Alphonse's body returned to normal. After that incident, the Elric brothers returned to their hometown and met Winry, while Hohenheim died with a happy face in front of his wife's grave. Meanwhile, Roy becomes Fura and reorganizes diplomatic relations with the Ishful tribe. Ling Yao became the Sing country's emperor and established peaceful relations with the Mei Chong clan. Homunculus pride is cared for by Bradley's wife and promotes that humans and homunculus can coexist. The moral that can be learned from this anime is, we will not easily get something without sacrificing something of equal value or even more. Sometimes, many things have to be experienced, even when in the right position. And finally, the painless lessons are meaningless.